Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and strength coach. I specialize in vestibular disorders and you are on my channel, The Steady Coach. Today we're going to deviate just a little bit from our talk about neural circuit dizziness and talk about a very closely related set of symptoms that I get asked about quite frequently here on my channel because frankly, they overlap a lot and because the mechanism for these other symptoms is so similar to those that we talk about for triple PD, MDDS type symptoms, and vestibular migraine. And those symptoms are visual snow and sensitivity to light or photophobia. So visual snow is the perception of dots, fuzz, bubbles, or snow that appear in the field of vision. And of course, as I mentioned, photophobia is having very unusual sensitivity to light. These are also often accompanied by other symptoms, particularly those related to having a persistent perception of something that you're looking at. So for example, people with visual snow and light sensitivity might also find that camera flashes seem to last for a really long time when they look at them, or sometimes even things that aren't particularly bright, just things that they look at tend to persist in their field of vision even after they've looked away from that thing. People with these kinds of issues also sometimes have trouble seeing at night, so they're sensitive to situations where there's low light. And research also indicates that folks who have these particular sets of symptoms also often have tinnitus or ringing or other types of sounds in their ears, known in some English speaking countries as tinnitus, same thing. And more importantly, there's a huge overlap with migraine. Now, do you notice that all of these symptoms that I just talked about seem to share something very important in common? And that is that someone who has one or more of these symptoms is basically just more sensitive to certain types of sensory information. Now, if you've been on my channel previously, you know that this is exactly what happens with neural circuit dizziness triple PD and other types of chronic dizziness. The brain starts to make a prediction error. In other words, it starts to overemphasize information coming from one sense or more than one sense. And this can cause kind of a perceptual flooding, which is what happens when people with triple PD or other neural circuit dizziness experience sensitivity to patterns and other types of visual stimuli. And what I've said so far, I think is relatively well understood by people who work with people who have visual snow and these other related conditions of light sensitivity, etc. So what I'd like to do today is make the connection between what I've called danger mode in the brain and the symptoms that you've been experiencing. Basically, when the brain is predicting certain information, it tries to match the sensory information to its predictions. In other words, your eyes, your ears, your sense of touch, all of your senses send your brain a whole lot of information, and it's your brain's job to sort through all the noise and just help you perceive the information that's important. So your brain uses its predictions or its expectations to help it do this. Otherwise, you would just be flooded by a bunch of nonsensical, overwhelming sensory information all the time. Ultimately, your perception, so what you actually feel, see, experience, is an opinion of the brain based on sensory information coming in that's filtered by the expectations of your brain. And I talk a lot more about this in the video on visual vertigo. So if you haven't seen that one, that's a good one to check out, and I'll put that in the description below. So in visual snow, 
and light sensitivity, what's happening is your brain's not making good predictions. With visual snow, it's not cleaning up the image that it's getting from your eyes. And in light sensitivity, it's taking in too much of that information. Why is it doing that? Well, a really good explanation for this is having a brain that is predicting danger. As we've talked about in previous videos, when your brain and your nervous system sense danger, all sorts of physiological changes occur in your body to prepare you to either fight or flee from the danger. So if your brain believes that there's a threat coming or that there's a threat around you already, it's going to sharpen its reliance on some of your senses, specifically your sense of vision, which is already dominant for many of us. In other words, your brain is going to pay more attention in finer detail to the information coming in from your eyes and it's going to emphasize and highlight what's there in your perception so another way to think about this is that a brain that's in danger mode or threat mode is expecting and looking for danger so it's more likely to enhance or turn the volume up on totally normal perceptions or enhance your senses in a way that leads to abnormal perception. Everyone has visual snow and sensitivity to light to some extent. So danger mode simply serves the function of turning the volume control way up on those two phenomena. So my argument here is that given that our normal conventional treatment for visual snow is to reduce the sensitivity of the brain, typically by the same kinds of treatments that we give to people with migraines, we're again treating the biological aspect of a biopsychosocial phenomenon. So bio, meaning the biological components that make someone vulnerable to visual snow and light sensitivity, and psycho and social, meaning stress, past relationships, traumas, attachment to caregivers, current social environment, etc. I know it may seem hard to believe if you're new to this idea that all three of those components affect disease, but this is actually very well accepted among mainstream medicine. The issue is that physicians and other medical healthcare professionals are trained only, in many cases, in the biological components of diagnosis and treatment, and they ignore the psychosocial components. Because, frankly, as well-meaning as someone is, those are much softer and harder to unravel for someone. They take time. They're not something you can easily fix with a pill or a procedure. So from my perspective, regardless of what you've already tried for your visual snow or photosensitivity, I think the conventional treatment is completely missing the point on what causes these symptoms to be so distressing to people. And that again is the psychosocial components, specifically the danger response. In other words, stress. I talk a lot about stress on my channel, so you're welcome to see some of my other videos on stress, which again, I will link to in the video description. But in short, if you have visual snow or photosensitivity, in my opinion, what you should be thinking about is managing stress and the danger response. And without going too much into detail, these are the three components. The first is education and understanding that this is not a life-threatening illness or disease and that your brain is actually doing a completely normal function. It is amplifying visual information in response to perceived danger. And when you understand that the perceived danger isn't really there, that can turn down the volume on your symptoms. The second component is managing stress. If you think back to when the symptoms started, take a good look at what was going on in your life during that time and in the year leading up to your symptoms. If there was a stressful event or some other kind of life stress, even good life stress, like getting married or having a child, it is completely possible that that is what put your brain in danger mode and caused it to latch onto and turn the volume control up on the symptoms. The third component is emotional awareness. Stress is not always on the outside. 
Stress also refers to how we process life events on the inside. And this is affected by all sorts of things, but especially our past experiences. Our nervous systems are programmed when we're young and difficulties that occur when we're young in particular can make our nervous systems hypersensitive to stress now. So in my free course on chronic dizziness, I go into a lot more depth on how to manage that current stress response and that response to past stressors as well. So if you have visual snow or light sensitivity, even if you don't have chronic dizziness symptoms, simply replace the word dizziness with your symptoms while you're going through the course, and I think it will help you a lot. I hope that was a helpful introduction for you guys. I know that there has been renewed anxiety about this online over the last few years. And I think that that is also an important social component of that biopsychosocial model of disease that is affecting how many of you are now suffering from this syndrome. I have another video on health anxiety that you may want to check out if you suffered from health anxiety before your visual snow symptoms kicked on or if you had suffered from other types of stress illnesses like migraines, like unexplained digestive issues, like tinnitus before your visual snow symptoms started. If you have questions or comments, please drop them below. I look forward to reading them. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to hearing from you guys and thanks for tuning in. Bye.